So what I have here today is an auto juice to wine setup here. This is built up in a furnace array like structure where we have hoppers doing everything and put them all in a line. Um, unlike how like a vanilla furnace would work where there's dedicated slots, the brewing barrel, the, the hoppers just kind of interact it, it, with it in like whatever whatever order for both input and output so that can really mess up things and that's why we have to set up things like uh what i'm using here is just these are just vanilla hopper clocks these aren't anything special and then there's also a dropper clock here which is really similar this is all vanilla redstone this isn't anything complicated it's also not a lot of materials and it's pretty easy to use also you're gonna need a lot of grapes or uh, wild berries and uh, this ain't a guide about that so if you don't got a lot of juice you can't make a lot of wine so uh well uh, i think i'll post what i know a couple guides of how to get a lot of grapes uh maybe wild berries too in the description of any guides that i know but uh yeah if you absolutely don't know nothing about wine that's even worse uh, i can't help you here i'm gonna give some special thanks first this dropper clock here I used is from Fruno Craft. Uh, put a link to his video in the description. And then I'm gonna shout out to RL Craft community members. Uh, there were Silent Stranger and Nishhelm who either helped to give me information or just gave inspiration in general to create this. So in this setup, it's gonna be manually loaded into using chests here. The back has grape juice, and then the top has glass bottles. I have six brewing barrels here. You could do half and half, or one side of different types of like wild berry and grape, but I'm just going to show off all grape here. In this setup, we use three hoppers per one brewing barrel, and our in initial is going to be the hoppers are going to be empty. This is important because it's going to change how we're going to do our first run of it. Our hoppers clocks are set up where we're going to take out 16 items. And then we're also going to put in 8 items. So this one's set to 16. This one's set to 8. And this one, how you want to do it is you want to load up the side where the redstone block isn't. So I would be loading up this dropper. And this one has five complete stacks of 64 and then in one stack of 56 in here so that we time it for about 10 minutes. And for our first time that we're going to run, we need to fill up the juice first. So we flick on that. It'll turn on and tell us that we're set up to put in the juice. And we'll see that this will insert seven juices here. It's set up, the hoppers are set up to do eight actions, and one of the actions that these hoppers have to do is first pull out from their chest, and that consumes one of their actions. So now, after that, we flip the switch, press the button again, and we'll see these glass bottles are taken out of the system, and then we're going to put in more items back into the system. This still isn't going to be correct. We still need to run the system once more. And then this will set it up where we'll have eight juices on this side and then eight glass bottles on this side. All right, once we're set up here, we could turn on our 10 minute clock that's set up here. It is set up to three and four as our repeater delays in here. Uh, more information about setting that up if you check out the Fruno Craft video. And now I can turn on the clock here and after 10 minutes, it'll reactivate this part of the system. we will act like when we press the button where it'll take out the 16 items. So when it's done, it'll be eight glass bottles and then eight complete wine. I'm just gonna do a tick warp. So tick warp using the carpet mod I installed on this installation. And we'll see that these are going by real fast now. I could watch this and guess about 10 minutes are passing. Alright, so it's almost going to be 10 minutes passing soon. I'm just going to watch this barrel and we're going to see. We might be able to, yep, we saw the things moved around quickly. It, and then 
we could check underneath here it says our tick warp is done and we have here a mixture of things because we had our grape juices that we had to push through the system at startup and now we have the completed wine here from the top here now and let's try running it again for another 10 minutes i'm gonna toss out these items now that the system is set up to loop now and we're gonna see how that works what our output will be once we've gotten to this point so another tick warp for 10 minutes all right it's time to watch the barrels here and yep the wine was taken out and it's put back in and so our total here that we are making is pretty decent this wine is currently coming out as trash because i didn't insert into slot one i'll show you what it looks like when we add pre add our wine here all right so i emptied most things from the previous run so whatever was in the barrels and also whatever is the output but i'm going to pretend that we're going to have it set up here where we're coming back to our system we can see now that the hoppers have their first items in here now and if we're at this point um we can just throw in our starting wine quality in here i'm just going to take the creative wine it's going to give me 0.75 as the starting quality you could put this in if you want you'll likely want to do this anyways but i'm just showing you that you can so i put in our six starting wine for our six barrels here and it's going to be the same steps again here let me just lock the uh uh 10 minute clock here and move over the timer items and let's see this go so we're going to turn this on so that we can insert in our grape juice at the start this should uh, insert in eight grape juice that's eight and since it did it like this correctly once just flick this click the button once and it'll set up the correct eight and eight on the two sides yep we got eight juice on this side and then eight glass bottles here then we could start the 10 minute clock now and then we could do another tick warp of 10 minutes we could check that the bottom chest this time only have 16 glass bottles Yep, you just saw the took out the finished wine and and inserted reinserted in the grape juice and we're back here again where we have completed bottles of wine of around the original quality that we put in this first slot here of 75. So our output was about these. These are a little step up, but you can keep doing these in mass. All right. So this system here and the next system are all both built all in one chunk. Where would I put this farm? I meant this uh, auto brewer. I'd either stick this near a base that you're going to AFK near, or you locate your spawn chunks using a vanilla compass, and you just follow where the red pointer is pointing to. And you could find the spawn chunks there. I'll explain that briefly. You could just find out a guide. There are better guides out there to figure out how to find and figure out the entire size of your spawn chunks in 1.12. But now we're going to go on to this next system where this system uses rails instead of a chest manual chest loading. However, it uses five hoppers per one brewing barrel. And so it's a bit more iron intensive. But both of these two designs could extend out in even longer because th these are just pretty much redstone lines in a straight line. You could pretty easily extend that with like a repeater or something and yeah that's a you can just expand if you just need a ton a ton of wine this one functions similarly to the chest loaded one i suck that we use 
hopper minecarts to do it for us to do the loading part. It requires five hoppers per one brewing barrel and it's set up similarly where it's the juice in back and then on top it gets the glass bottles. So in the back here it would have been juice bottles and then in this area here would be glass bottles. And how I like to do it is if you put a container at the edge, so like here or here, then the hopper minecart picks about six items and then can distribute to about uh, six hoppers. However, this is attached to a 10 minute timer, so if we extend it, that's plenty of time for the hopper minecarts to try and fill up everything. But as you can see, this used to be completely filled with grape juice. But they've all been put into these hoppers and not even all of them are completely full because we ran out of a double chest's worth of grape juice. And even the bottom is also will collect with a hopper minecart and then we're kind of lazy. We just have one hopper here and then one storage thing and then it'll just all run like the chest one we could pre-place our starting wine in here some of these i've taken out the bottles but not all of them and we'll see that it'll work fine if we're lazy like that just gonna flip on the switch so that we can insert in our juice then we should see eight juice get put inside of this thing four five six seven eight and then and then we need to run the system where we, again, this will take out that and set it up where we have the uh, eight and eight on the correct side. So eight juice and eight empty. And that happens to all of these brewing barrels. They're all good. And so now we could start the 10 minute clock. So once again, fill up the side where there's no redstone block and then you could turn on the switch which will turn on the clock and then we're just going to do another tick warp tick warp for 10 minutes and then after about 10 minutes the wine will finish and then the system will take it out and then reinsert the next batch Yep, I did that real fast because it was still during the tick warp. And then this hopper minecart is going to try and pick up everything. It's kind of lazy how much it's still left in here. A good amount is still left up in it, everything. And it'll slowly take them out and slowly fill up this barrel. This barrel has a lot of uh, work to do. But of course, this is on a 10 minute timer. And so that's plenty of time for this uh, hopper to slowly uh, draw out items out of this uh, hopper minecart. And of course, we can make it faster by adding more hoppers and more storage to take out items out of this hopper minecart faster. So besides the usual world download, I'm also going to provide uh, schematics this time because I also made these in Schematica. So yeah, I already have it saving on my computer I'll just share that file somewhere and the center of this is just smack in the center of the chunk I've thrown these into their where their center is in the chunk coordinates of seven seven uh, eight eight would be fine too or any of the seven eight combinations those would be the direct center of the chunks which are 16 by 16 so yeah so these are center chunk aligned if you are doing the recommended build in a chunk. For both of these, most of their clock and wiring is all the using all the same redstone. So there's nothing really much to change except a few things such as what goes on top of the hoppers and how we set up the redstone to lock those hoppers. For this one, I threw an extra line in front. And this one, I just threw the redstone line right on top of the hoppers here. It's just a relatively small difference that you can check out for yourself. When I do the uh, build tutorial, I'll probably just build only one of these. And then you can figure out how to wire it up yourself. 
All right, so here's all our materials all in one chest. It's pretty simple. This will be the uh, manual loaded chest one because uh, they both share the same circuitry anyway, so you can very easily swap between a T2 or upgrade. But these are the materials. They're all in this chest. Uh, I'll probably have it in a comment or in the description of the video too of all the materials. And in our compass, it's pointing around in this area. This is telling us that we're within our spawn chunks. We don't know exactly how big our spawn chunks is, but if we dump our uh, build here, it should be running all the time that you're in the oval world or all the time if you're playing on a server. And right here, if we turn on F3, even with reduced debug information, we can see that we're standing in the middle of the chunk because our chunk relative is staying within the seven and eight range between these four blocks here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna build is our hopper clock. And so we're gonna need our sticky pistons and redstone components. So I like to build it on the center. So where I stand here, I can put our first redstone dust and behind us is gonna be our first torch tower there. And then around here, we can start building our Hopper clock and piston there. One, two, three temporary blocks. You dump this there and pop that out. Connect your hoppers together so they point to into each other. And then build the structure to have the rest of the hopper clock in here. And we need our comparators here. Comparators facing works reading out the hopper and putting its output into this block here where you put two redstone dust here and then we could uh build a little bit of the other component here where we have our redstone repeater here and then behind it we can have a redstone torch rating there just to keep it locked the next thing we're going to do is connect this to the next uh, hopper clock and also build that clock. So build it here, your building block there, put a torch there, and then it goes downward like that into a torch and then put a dust up here. And then this is going to be where we build our uh, next uh, next uh, hopper clock so right here have our hoppers facing each other throw the block right there and then another line of this put a piston there comparator in the same mirror position and then that's that hopper clock set up there and how I like it is that these redstone blocks when you leave them in the locked position it'll all line up stop now we're gonna hook up the back of this now so from this position we can create a building block there and dust here torch there redstone torch and then another torch up here and then this is where we add our delay circuit so we could dump a repeater there on max delay and then this back here starts being our back wiring to control the back hoppers. And so two and four, that's how I'm just gonna build it up for now. And it'll end up like that for now. While we're up here, might as well make the over the top wiring. So put a torch there, a block up there. One, two, three, four, five and run dust all along the top of it and dump a torch at the end of it. T easy there. Let's finish up the front. We can make and extend our torch tower up one more. And then this is where we're gonna start wiring the front control. And this can all be dust, I believe. And yeah, that should be this front part. Then on top of it, we need our final front controls and 
Did I build this the wrong amount? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, did I make six? I did make six. So this is supposed to be five, and then it'll connect the two here. And it'll line up like this. So now let's continue on with our hooking up the rest of it. So here, this will start connecting to our dropper clock. And we need to make a torch tower control here. So this will be a torch up here, keeping that lit up. And then what we need here is another torch tower up to three. Put a torch there, and then we can make a staircase to control it from the front. Then this would be where we dump our button. Right here, so it controls, it shuts off, sends a signal back to that dropper there. I meant hopper there, hopper clock. And that's that part of this signal here. So all we have left here is the dropper clock itself. So this is going to be 5 here. Five. No, we need a observer and trapdoor starting here. And I don't need that anymore. The thing that we're observing, we need a trapdoor here. We're obser observing the trapdoor. So flick it. This should also almost control it. All right, I need a redstone repeater with at least one delay. You flick it, and now this is able to communicate with the other hopper clock then this is where we can start building the uh, the dropper clock here so block there two three four piston there two piston there and then underneath we have this part I believe it goes like this. And yeah, let's continue. We need our droppers to face into each other. So dropper, 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 dropper. And then we throw our comparators similar to how the hopper clock works. So it reads the uh, droppers. And then we uh, don't want to forget putting the redstone dust in these corners here. Extend that. Put there. And I like to put my lever there. We're going to need repeaters now. And how we place our repeaters is going to be one that goes into the block and then one that goes out. And one needs to be set on four, and one needs to be set on three. And no, nope, can't check that with reduce debug. You'll just have to remember how to set your repeaters. Throw a torch there, and then this part of the clock is done here. We just want to have our override controls on here. So we can build a on top of these pistons. Throw that there. And then we can build another staircase. This staircase will connect everything back to one switch. And so I'm just going to dump the switch there. One, two, three, four. Click it on. It'll lock that part of the clock. And I can link these up. And it'll lock out those uh, uh, pistons too. So now we can throw in our final bits here. I like to put the switch up here. And this is optional, but the redstone lamp, we could see even though this line is on, it's not powering the lamp. The only thing that can power the lamp is the switch, and the switch is the override to lock out um, the, the glass insert line so we can have the juice insert. And at this point, we just need to put in all the barrels here. Should be pretty simple to put in all the barrels. Uh, do I need a hopper? Might as well. You can put the barrels along the back of this redstone, or try to, or you could uh, put another block there to help you. Um, you can't have the barrel where the middle of the thing goes, because it's being has these other redstone components. 
Then we put hoppers going into the back of these guys and hop Stop! hoppers going on top of these guys. And of course to collect we put them under these guys too. And then we load up our chests and since we're in a version of Minecraft where we can't put uh, a triple chest down we have to use another chest type to go next to it. It's easier to use these double chests than they use like a varied commodities uh, crate or barrel because of course the container goes across two hoppers. So now we just need to set our hoppers, um, hopper clocks upright. This first one is going to be 16 items. So we're going to split up this bedrock stack into 16. It might shift to be underneath this redstone block, that's fine. And this one only has 8 bedrock in it, that's fine. Because Did I uh, forget a piece? Oh, that's just a pretty clear issue. This isn't even a piston. And yeah, now we're set here. What a what a silly issue. Now we're in our last clock that we need to fill up. I prefer to fill it on the side without the redstone block because if you put it in the side of the redstone block, it's going to shift one and could possibly activate everything. So what do we need? We need five stacks. And I like to go up to 56 to be safe. 55 is the exact timing, but I put in the extra item just in case. So that should set up our, all our clocks here. Um, we should be just about ready to run this. Alright, so I just fixed an issue where... Or I had a hopper facing the wrong direction, so make sure your hoppers are all facing correctly into the barrel. I had one where a hopper was facing into another hopper and that was causing an issue. So right now... I have uh, grape juice in the back, glass bottles on top, and the hoppers are under the chest unloaded, so we need to do the first run step, which is turn on the lever, press it once, and then we should see seven grape juice get inserted in. So that's seven in both of them. We could now flick the lever and now run the system again. It'll take out those bottles and then still enter in a wrong amount, but with the next run, it should be fine. So now it's still wrong. We press it here. And we just run the system to take out the stuff. Now that stuff is out. I don't need to fix that. I disconnected it during some trying to fix the hopper issue. And now that we're here, we're going to make sure our, yep, our dropper is all loaded with 5 stacks and then 56. And then we could flip on the 10 minute timer and then we can run a tick warp. I need to make sure my render is low so this can tick warp pretty quickly. So tick warp and we could see everything's going by fast. And we can see the wine finishes and then the system takes it out after a little bit and then it starts refilling the next round. We'll do another tick warp to see it again to make sure it works. And we can see the hopper clock working in the opposite direction. Yep, the wine just finished, and then it's going to go take it out. Then, yep, tick warp complete. And then if we want to grab our finished stuff, it's underside in these hoppers here. These output hoppers are going to be locked, so even if we put a chest underneath right now, the items won't appear there yet. They'll only appear there when it's taken out of the barrel. And I forget if it takes up an action but what I would prefer to do at this point would be to just build a rail system underneath it so this is when we start using our rails so it's pretty easy to just line up a ton of rails going underneath to grab the items right out of the hoppers or you could just go around manually grab out the wine from here and as we can saw from the beginning demonstration we could put in our starter wine in here too and that'll work out fine too okay this final bit is recommended Although it's optional, it's spawn-proof everything. 
because we have a lot of blocks where things are spawnable on. You could either do light level spawning or you could do slabs on top of some of these components. So say these uh, pistons, when they are retracted, they're considered a full block. We got to put a spawn proofing on them. And so here we can see there's a few blocks around here that need spawn proofing. But it's not that bad. You could also choose to do light too. Light is easier if it's flying in the air. And looks like that needs spawn proofing too. And these two don't look like they need spawn proofing. And that looks like about enough spawn proofing that we need on this setup. Make sure to hit F7 to see the uh, light level display. And if you're a builder, just one final thing. Let me just get wood. Wooden planks. Well, this is the plat height that uh, I intended you or thought of should be the standing level. So some of it has holes. It's whatever. But if you are a builder, there is at least you can make it look reasonable because most of the redstone is underneath the build. Um, and it's underneath this main part. So it could all look like this. And of course, there's redstone in the back and goes underground. But if you wanted to throw it in a building, this would kind of be what you visually see. Uh, some holes to see the redstone components, but whatever. And one final ch check. I turn back on debug information and yep, everything is all safely running in one chunk. I would recommend having all three clocks in one chunk and generally whatever barrels you hook up your main barrels will be in the one chunk and your other ones that you connect into another chunk will be at risk but it would be much reduced risk if you threw this setup into the spawn chunks if you build this around a base that you have far away from the spawn chunks and that relies on player reloaded it'll be really really rare where your redstone will fail or for say the clocks just go off in one chunk and then the next chunk over none of the barrels get updated oh and it actually it is especially worse because uh, if you're not loading the barrels in another chunk then they're obviously not making wine in there and that's pretty not good